Welcome back, fellow streakers. It is good to have you. How are you doing today, Jamie? I'm so good. I'm excited to do our final podcast with John. This has been so much fun. Oh, absolutely. So much fun. John has given us so much insight into what it takes, honestly, to be successful in life and the process that you put in place in order to do that. You know, John, one of my uh, favorite um, books of recently is How to Think Like a Rocket Scientist. And in that book, he talks about that all great accomplishments or extraordinary things were done by people who focused on the input, not on the accomplishment. And what you were saying last time with John Wooden, you know, I one of the things that Jamie and I did in, in research for the streaking book is we looked at all the winning streaks that were out there. And John Wooden's winning streak of 88 games, his team won 88 games in a row. It was, as you mentioned, all about the inputs. And we could go through many of the different winning streaks, but let's let's continue forward with the conversation with you. Um, you had left off our last podcast with wanting to share another example. And I'd love to start right there if we could. If, if, if you remember what that example was, let's just I start do. there. Yeah, so... During the pandemic, unfortunately, I stopped tracking my weight. So I just sort of, you know, let things go. And I've always been into physical fitness. But during the pandemic, for whatever reason, I just let it go. So about a little bit more than a year, I let it go. And then I got on the scale back in January. And I'm like, holy cow, this is horrible. <laughs> so I gained a lot of weight. And I was at 193.6 pounds. And I'm like, I, I've never even weighed close to that in my life. What on earth happens? And you know what happened, Jeff and Jamie? My wife, I'm, I'm getting ready for work. And she goes, it's very noticeable that you're overweight. And I'm like, whoa, my wife has never said a critical thing of me in my life. I've never heard that. And so I got on the scale and I was like, oh, wow, this is bad. And so what I did was I reached out to an organization that I now work with and I document my food and exercise, my food consumption and exercise every single day on a website. And this organization will critique it, get back to me. We have daily accountability phone calls. And because I've been documenting my food and exercise, food consumption and exercise every single day, on January 18th of this year, I've documented that when I weighed 193.6, I now weigh 173.8. I've lost 20 pounds through the power of consistency. And that doesn't mean that I always have a great day because sometimes I fall off the ledge and I'll have a ah. bad day where I'll have an indulgence and that's fine because indulgences are part of life and treating yourself is part of life. But what I've seen Jeff and Jamie is just an amazing downward progress. And it's not much, it's half a pound. It might be seven tenths of a pound. It's just a little bit. Last week I gained two tenths of a pound, but if you look at this, it's just, it's just slowly moving down. And over the course of through the power of streaking, in this case, the activity of simply documenting what I eat every day, which takes about two minutes to do on a website, that has led to the loss of 20 pounds of weight. And now I feel healthy. I've got energy. And I'm so inspired by what you do as a couple in your jogging streak. So morphing into that, I decided based upon your inspiration to jog at least one mile every day. So I used, to, I, I've always enjoyed jogging, but I do it sporadically in the past. I've done it maybe once or twice a week, sometimes a little bit more, but no consistency at all. And I've run four half marathons. That's awesome. So I like to think I'm, I'm decent, but not great at, at jogging and running. So uh, what I did was, I began a jogging journal, which is right, actually it's right here. And every single day I jog at least one mile. And there's times I don't have any time, but I make time for this. That's the worst phrase in the American language. I don't have time for that. Because when right. someone tells me that, what they're really saying is what you're asking me to do is not a priority for me. Mm -hmm. And so can I make time out of my day to jog at least one mile? Well, my daughter was graduating from Fordham University in May. We had to be there at eight in the morning and we had to get ready at seven. So that morning I got up at five. I wrote a, a, bare, a four page, actually a five page handwritten note about how grateful I was for all of the incredible accomplishments of my daughter. And I'm very big into personal handwritten notes. 
And then I went and I jogged around this ugly hotel in the Bronx, four laps around it. It was 1.24 miles, but my streak was alive. And so yep. even though I didn't have time that day to jog, and I knew my whole day would be at the graduation and then having dinner afterwards, I just made time for it. So we just have to make a little bit of time. And Jeff and Jamie, the biggest failure I see with streakers, because we do have a private Facebook community, which Jeff, you've uh, very nicely added a few streakers to our group, and they are really good, is that what I see is people make their streaking activity too difficult. Yes. Like, for example, I want to exercise at least 30 minutes a day. That's kind of tough yes. to do that. But can, can you make it so laughably simple that it would be crazy not to do it, as Jeff and Jamie would say? And so, yeah, jogging at least a mile, I can do that. Piece of cake. Can I make at least one Google request a day for a review? Yeah, that takes seconds. So, and just keeping that streak alive. And as you both would say, if you're not documenting your streak, it's not a streak. So I keep written journals and I also have a private Facebook group called The Streakers. So if anyone reached out to me on Facebook, I'd be happy to add you to our group. And really what I've seen is many people start out and they're very excited, they're doing this, and then they drop off the map and they're not actually doing what they say that they're gonna do. And as you both would say is, when you do what you say you're going to do, you're building credibility with yourself. And so I can say, that since I began my jogging streak, and it pales in comparison to your, I think, nine plus year streak, but still. Uh, Not quite that day... long. We're at, we're at six years. It's oh, six, uh, years. six okay. years. Yeah, six years. But, but I'm on day number 82, and I've jogged 281 miles. That's amazing. You know, and, and Jeff and Jamie, this when I jog every morning, I, I knock it out at like 6am. I I'm so energized by doing that. And I feel like Everything, and I hate to say this to some people, but I feel like I'm 18 years old. I have no <laughs> aches. I don't hurt. You know, my neck, my wife has aches and pains. And I'm like, you know, I don't say this, but I'm like, I don't have any. And I feel totally energized by beginning the day. And as you would say, I feel once I've done the streak activity early in the morning, then I've won that day. And, yeah. and so I'm starting out with a win for the day. And so I make the Google review early in the day, in the morning. I jog early in the morning because I want to knock it out. I don't want it to wait to the end of the day where I might forget about it. But the journaling by itself keeps the streak top of mind because by documenting, it's reinforcing the activity in your brain. And it's hard to forget. I've also started a streak my whole life. I went to high school. I went in the high school years. I was part of the time I was in Germany. And I lived with a German family who did not speak English. And what I've done since that, I've maintained my contact with my close German friend, but I have not maintained my German. And so I, I lost it all, but I want to reinstill that I started a, ger a German streak, which is now on day, I think, 25. Day, today is 25. And what I'm doing is I'm learning a phrase or a word in German once a day. So if I wanna do one phrase, that's it, I'm done. If I wanna do more than that, I, I, um, I, I usually do about 15 to 20, but if I just do one, that's fine. It's a laughably simple activity that I do at least once a day. And what I'm finding, the cumulative results of doing this activity that really adds up over time. It might not seem like much on a daily basis when you add it up, it's huge. And Jeff and Jamie, what I tell my daughters, I'm really into finance and personal investment. I tell her, look, I can guarantee that you will be a multimillionaire in your life if you do one thing. Just deduct 15% of everything that you make for the rest of your life. Put it, if you're eligible, put it into a Roth IRA and you will be a multimillionaire, if, regardless of what your income is. And young people hear that and they're like, yeah, that makes sense, but they don't do it. And right. it's execution that is the problem, because I know my daughter, if she starts doing these things, she would have unbelievable wealth. But you have to start when you're age 18, not when you're 50. You know, that's, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> And I love, that's one of my favorite things about the, the methodology for me personally with streaking is it gave me that place to start. It gave me that, that feeling of, okay, I'm just going to start now. I don't have to conquer the world. I don't have to, sometimes I don't have to be where I wish I was 
had I started a long time ago, I can start now with the laughably simple and, and it will over time make a difference. And, and the thing I love too, is that you talk about, um, the level of confidence that I'm able to have in myself. When you were talking about going out on your jog, when your daughter was graduating, I had in my head, a visual of when we were driving back, I think we were driving back from, from Colorado, but I, I, it was my turn to drive and it was halfway through the day and I hadn't done my run for that day. And we had stopped at this seriously podunk gas station that was really in the middle of nowhere, but it was attached to like a motel. And I just took 15 minutes and just did a quick jog four or five times around the parking lot of that decrepit gas station motel. And it was interesting as I was running because there was nothing to look at, thinking that I love that this gets me out doing things that I normally wouldn't do in places that I normally wouldn't do them so that I can keep the streak alive. And in that moment, it helped me. We'd been driving for hours. I was able to get out, kind of move things around inside my body and get back in and be able to drive for the rest of that drive. And it just was such a great example of how taking the time, like you said, to do those things that are important to us each day helps us feel better about ourselves, helps us feel like, okay, I'm doing the things that are important to me, even on the days when I've got a lot of other things going on, I still am finding ways to make this happen. And it makes me feel better about myself as a person and, a, and, and more accomplished. And Jamie, and, and thank you for sharing that. One, one thing that I wanna share with both of you, and Jeff, you alluded to this earlier that I've been streaking before I read your book, Streaking, and that's true, but it was un, unwittingly I was streaking. So for example, uh, for the last 10 year, this is our 10 year anniversary of having a monthly print newsletter for our law firm. It goes out to all the people who send us business, all of our prospective cli clients. Yes, nice. it's called Lawyer Alert. And so every single month without fail that has gone out for over 10 years now, and That's it amazing. has driven so many referrals to our business and it is, is the consistency. So when I speak at, at, for trial lawyer organizations, I just spoke in Arkansas a month ago. They say, oh, print newsletters, those don't work. We, we, you know, we've tried that. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And I say, okay, how long did you try it? And they'll say, well, I tried it for four or six months. And I said, well, wait a minute. There's the problem. It, you have to do anything consistently over time for really about two to three years, years before you see the results. And if you do a marketing activity consistently for two to three years, you could do virtually anything and you will have amazing success. And that's what I found with Lawyer Alert, our print newsletter. It's the consistency that matters. If there's one key to success in anything, I would say it boils down to one word, consistency, because whatever you do consistently is what you become. And in my spiritual life, every day I spend time alone in prayer with God. And I, I, there's four components of my prayer, but I do that every day without fail. And it's the consistency of the activity, because in my view, what God wants from me more than anything else is my time, just like my children want my time. And I need to give my time to, to nurture and develop that relationship with God. And I do have a third book, which is almost done. And I've told Jeff about this. It's called Win Today. So, for example, and it's all based on essentially streaking. And there's a chapter about streaking in this book. And basically, Win Today means you have these huge dreams, you have goals, and you're thinking about all these great things, but don't worry about the results. Win today, get started today, do something, even if it's a tiny little activity that will get you on the path to where you want to be. Because if you win today, and then you begin winning consistently every single day, you'll find results over the course of six to 12 months will be beyond your wildest imagination. Yeah, that's and as you're talking- Sorry, ahead, Jeff. No, As you were talking, I was thinking about things that we had talked about in the past about um, kind of where your focus is when you're in your in your 20s, this idea of making money and getting ahead. And when you're looking at when you can focus on winning each day in the sense of the things that you decide that are important to you, you are accomplishing things. But really what's happening is that you're becoming the person that you want to be. And it changes that focus from, I want to make money. I want to get that next position to, I want to be this kind of person. And that's what 
I feel like what you were saying in past podcasts is what truly brings us happiness is when we decide the kind of person that we want to be of serving other people, of recognizing other people, of being of service and helping out that as we become that kind of person, we become happy with who we are. And, and then the accomplishment will follow in line. But the amazing thing too, is I was thinking about even clear back to our first podcast, when you would worked for a law firm for 14 years and then, and then, and you're successful and you're making lots of money and you're doing everything right. And you get fired. I mean, something you had no control over yet, everything that you had learned, everything that you had done, you were able to take those things with you. And still, so everything that you had become through that experience, you were able to take that with you and use it to become even better as you progressed in doing something that you were able to realize, this is what I really wanted to do. This is the, the, the mission that I really wanted in my life. And that's what I think as we look at, as we look at people in different stages of their life, and, and we talked a lot about those 20 year olds, because they're in that place where they're figuring out who they want to be, recognizing that as we set these streaks to do these laughably sim simple things and we become consistent in these things at that age, you become the person you want to be. You don't just do or achieve the things that, that life has to offer, but you become the person that you want to be. I think that's a huge distinction. I think no, I just absolutely. did a mic drop moment, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. Absolutely. As we, um, you know, as we, as we come up on the end of our third podcast here, we still got a few more minutes. One of the things that I wanted to emphasize, just as we go through a couple of, a couple of points that stood out to me. First one is when we talk about streaking, a lot of times people look at law number three and look at the creative community as a place where, you go to be held accountable, which it's actually not true. What we found is that you create a community to celebrate together. And this is what I love about what we're doing right here is celebrating what you've done, John, but also celebrating. I mean, you have so many other people who celebrate with celebrate you at with your you. streaker group on Facebook mm -hmm. and how many people you celebrate is so significant and so real and so wonderful. And that and I is, loved that. Sorry, Jeff. I loved that yeah. you naturally wanted to create a community to celebrate that. That was something that again, kind of innately followed what you wanted to do where you're like, okay, I want to create a Facebook page where we are celebrating this together as a community. I think that's something that happens with streaking. Absolutely. Well, and it's so true, Jeff. I mean, what we're doing with the, the, the Facebook group, and, and unfortunately, I've had to kick some people out because they're just not engaging in it. And if you're not streaking with us, it's, you know, you're not appropriate for our group. But what I can say, it's more a, a celebration group. That's really what it is, because yeah. what I'm documenting, and I'm not doing this to be boastful, but sharing, celebrating the results that we've had with streaking. And, and I will actually take photographs of our streaking journal and post it on the private Facebook group. And then other people will sometimes do the same thing. One of our streakers wants to make her bed every day because she was too sloppy. That's a wonderful streak, right? That is a wonderful yeah, that's streak. Great. And, and, but the, the failure that I've seen Jeff and Jamie of most streakers is they're making their activities too difficult where it's not going to be sustainable. One person wants to fast every single day. That is not sustainable. That's not uh, if, if you wanted to fast once a week, that would be more sustainable, but it's just too difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Which brings me to the other thought that I had, which was one of the things that you had mentioned early on, and this is, I think this is a common pitfall that people go into when they set their physical streaks. And one of the pitfalls that I've seen is that I want to exercise for at least put a time frame in there daily. Timed streaks and physical streaks are absolute failure points because what happens is you start to focus on the clock and not on the activity to be done. And what really needs to happen is if you're setting a physical streak, it's like what you said, you and I have a similar streak, John. In fact, we should join the streaking community together. I track my calories every single day. So all my inputs I, I have, and I've done that now for, um, I think I'm on four or five years of, I know everything that I've eaten every single day, the amount of calories that have gone in. And the reason I do that is because I want to be aware of now, I haven't set goals for losing weight I, I, all the time. I mean, I have a couple of times, but I found that by just tracking what I take into my body and what I take in on a daily basis helps me to recognize those times where I'm a little bit 
crazy, you know, uh, indulgent, in, indulgent, uh, rich <laughs> rather than, you know, ke- keeping it into the healthy. But the other thing that it does for me is it gives me an activity to do. And it's very simple to do. I use my fitness pal and I just put in there right as, right as the meal goes or, or a couple of meals after what I ate for the day. And it works just great. The other thing that I found with physical is when I say I'm going to do something, even if it's for one minute, that sounds laughably simple, but it never is. Instead, it's do at least one push up, do at least one sit up, do at least one squat, do run at least one mile. The activity then becomes the focus and it becomes the floor. Again, what we talked about last time on which people stand in order to get where they where they need to go. So I just wanted to, those are kind of some of the thoughts that came in our last few minutes here, John, I want to I want to give the floor back to you. And just it, as as you think about, you know, your career and all aspects of not only your career, personal, professional, physical and spiritual life, just just kind of wrap up for us some of the things that have been, you know, we've talked about a lot of poignant things that you've had already, but some of the things that just have come to mind as 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 we wrap up here and and let me say on behalf of Jamie and I, we have really really enjoyed uh these these podcasts. I mean, it's Absolutely. been fantastic, don't you think, Loved Jamie? It. Absolutely. Well, every, every once in a while, Jeff and Jamie, God blesses my life with incredible people. And that's the, the true value of life. And Jeff, when you came into my life through the four disciplines of execution workshop, that was an absolute gift and a blessing to my life. So I'm so grateful for that. And, and Jamie, I can just tell through the podcast what a special person you are. And I love how you share the details about your family in your book. By the way, I have my daughter's name is also Lily. And I know you have oh, a daughter by that name. So <laughs> Jeff, one thing I would say to finish this is that oftentimes people come to me about books and they'll be like, you know, I want to write a book, but I I just don't know where to get started. And it's such a huge endeavor. And what I say to them is don't worry about writing a book, write a single paragraph and that's it. And then you write that paragraph, whether that's daily, weekly or whatever, and then you're done if, if you want to be done. And so what I do when I write is I'll, I'll sit down on a Saturday morning and I'll say, today I'm gonna write at least two paragraphs. And then what happens is I write the two paragraphs and then I get into it. And then two or three hours later, I've got a whole chapter of a book. So just getting started is such an important component of writing a book. And I have written two books and my third book is just about finished because all I do is I just get started. I start writing. The law firm of your dreams is 500 pages. And what I want to do in my mission in life is to help other lawyers build and manage the law firm of their dreams, because that's something that we're never taught in law school. God gave me this through all of my failures and mistakes. He showed me these are the things not to do. And what a horrible thing it is in our society that people don't share their knowledge and wisdom from their mistakes. So I I put all of that into a book. And, I, and basically, if you know someone who wants to start a law firm or really even start a business, here's the basic principles that you need to do. And here's how you get clients. Here's business development. Here's how you manage a law firm. This is how you hire people because no one ever taught me any of that stuff. But in writing those books, it's just the consistent activity of getting started with at least writing two paragraphs. And then I, don't, I didn't do it a day, but weekly I'd write at least two paragraphs And then over time, you've got something truly special. So getting started and winning today is the key to getting long-term, unbelievable results. And I have to say thank you to both of you, not just for the, the workshops, Jeff, that you did for us, but for this book, because you're sharing your wisdom with, with us and you're transforming lives and not just, you know, physical, professional, spiritual, in all aspects of life. And it is profoundly impacting my life. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, John. Thank you. Well, everyone, fellow streakers, you have heard from a streaker that is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, John, one of the things that you'll know is that in um, a year from what well, we're going in, in 2022, we're going to have our first streaking conference 
where we'll all meet together, all streakers. We're going to invite them from all over the world. We'll have our first streaking conference. And we would hope that you would be one of our guest speakers at that conference uh, when we have it. We'll tell you the date and everything. We'd love to have you. But fellow streakers, hopefully what you've gained, uh, we've we've gained. uh, John, it's it's been absolutely phenomenal. If you'd like to learn a little bit more, um, John, would you mind giving your email address uh, to everyone? Or if if it, please do. And I'm we'd happy love to. to have um, if anyone would what, like free copies of my books, they're called The Power of a System, The Law Firm of Your Dreams. They're basically about business development and managing any firm, not just law firms. Uh, if you email me, J Fisher, F I S H E R, lawyer at gmail.com, or you can call or text me. My cell is 518 265 9131. I will be happy to send you free signed copies of my books. And they're awesome. absolutely phenomenal. Jamie, anything else? Just that I'm going to send the books over to our to our children that are in law school. I know that's going to be great. Yeah, our two so our two you. children, our our oldest, our oldest and her husband are both in law school right now, and uh, I can't wait to share what we have talked about with you and also the books that you have, John. Mm-hmm. All right, great. well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Uh, Until we talk next time, you know, if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to share with us, please do so at Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y at streakingmastery.com or Jamie, J-A-M-I at streakingmastery.com. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, review the book, continue to leave the podcast. And also one last thing, and John, this is one of the things, the app is absolutely a phenomenal place to keep track of your streaks. And the app is getting a huge upgrade uh, coming in the fourth quarter of this year where we're going to have a more robust community with those. But more on that as we come. Until we talk next time. Keep streaking. things that make a better better you